All right, well, it's been a while since I made a video, and after doing a What the Truck video with Solomon on the Ford Era channel, I figured I'd, since I wasn't prepared whatsoever for that, it was totally spur of the moment, I wanted to do another video just to kind of more detail all the stuff that I've done on this truck and been wanting to do it for YouTube for a long time anyway. So anyway, this is my 74 F-250 crew cab. The uh, only thing stock is the cab, three doors, a fender, and a hood. Everything else has been replaced at least once. It is on a new frame. It's on a, that's probably the best place to start. It's sitting on a 78 frame. And I did that for a couple reasons. One, to get away from the high boy steering. And also the 77 to 79 crew cabs have a wider rear frame like the F-150s. So it fits this 38-gallon uh, fuel tank. That was a huge, huge goal of this was to be able to go on long road trips without having to stop. So this originally was a... 360 four-speed truck. I got it 10 years ago and it already had been swapped to a 460. So it was 460 four-speed. Drove it like that for years and kind of started accumulating parts and starting with the frame. I got the frame and built the entire suspension and then mounted the drivetrain in it and once I got to that point where everything was painted, powder coated and ready and I took the body off my old truck, took it down to Tempe and had Lee at Color Wheel Customs repaint it. Did an amazing job. And uh, probably some of the stuff you can't see, but I would mention is that inside of every panel is coated with Raptor liner. So inside of the fenders, underside of the hood, inside of the bed, under the cab, the firewall. I did under the hood too, which a lot of people, a lot of people like a nice shiny under hood, like where the underside of the hood looks the same as the top side, just as shiny, but it's black Raptor liner on this. And then the bed is color matched Raptor liner. So <clears throat> once it got back from paint, mounted the body on here and, uh, I should probably mention what uh, the suspension is made out of. Starting from the front, we have a 2008 Super Duty axle, and the rear is a 2005. The only reason they're different is because it's hard to get axles with 410s. And most, you probably know, but like 90% of Super Duties have 373 gears, so. It's really hard to find ones with 410s or 430s. So I figured 410s would be the best for having 37 inch tires. Um, and that was with the plan of having a stock 5.0 Coyote in here. And you probably also, I mean, everybody says, oh, when you're only gonna put a 302 cubic inch motor in here, it, uh, how is that going to have enough power to turn this big of a truck? Well, you should probably know that this truck weighs only a couple hundred pounds more than a stock 2017 F-150 crew cab. It weighs 6,300 pounds compared to 5,500, so that's not a lot more weight. And second of all, you can't get an F-150 with anything lower than 355 gears and if you haven't never drove one well I can tell you they're really fast so when you put four tens and a supercharger it's really fast for being a actually a pretty lightweight truck so <clears throat> I guess I'll uh, pop the hood here so under the hood here we've got a 2017 Gen 2 Coyote with a Roush Mustang supercharger kit and I could tell you a lot of things about trying to put a Mustang supercharger kit on a truck motor 
but uh, basically don't ever do it. Just get a Mustang motor. Learned my lesson on that the hard way. It still works with just a lot of extra work. Uh, let's see, we also have Hydro Boost. I got uh, the Hydro Boost mount kit from Battleborn Brakes. Super cool company to work with. He's done a bunch of stuff for me. Uh, let's see, the antifreeze and the intercooler tank are custom made by my buddy Cody. Does all my custom fab and welding. Uh, here you can see what I was talking about, a Raptor lined under the hood. I wanted this thing to be quiet, quiet on the inside while you're driving it. And so as little road noise as possible. The uh, inner fenders are powder coated. The uh, core support, powder coated. Um, let's see what else. Got the powder coating on all these parts. Let's see. Got the CVF hinges. And that pretty much takes care of it for under here. Um, I guess while I'm here, one thing about this 79 grill, you know, everybody's got their preference on grills. And if I put a 74 on it, somebody would say, why don't you put a 79 grill? Well, I like 79s. And uh, I'll tell you about this piece right there. I got in a wreck with this truck about six years ago and totaled out this lady's van and uh, that's the only thing that happened to my truck so I kind of leave that for good luck instead of replacing with a new grill I decided to keep the original stock forward and keep the dent it's for good luck anyway moving on so moving on to the suspension what we have is custom steering. I get all my steering parts from Heartland Fab. The only thing separate, I guess, would be this very special billet steel bracket right there. That was made by Clark and Smith Fab in Michigan. Only a couple trucks that I know of in the whole country have that, and it was really handy to mount a tra track bar on the top side of the axle instead of on the bottom like the stock ones oh uh, let's see got the bds dual steering stabilizer set up these are fox two and a half inch coilovers eight inch travel custom made shock towers those are from heartland fab that's a stock super duty sway bar i just bolted it in and got custom uh sway bar in links uh, let's see Got all power stop brakes on this thing all brand new every single thing on the Every seal gasket everything of course brand new uh, Let's see of course When you're talking about doing a four link You have all kind of compromises and without going into talking about suspension design forever there's enough YouTube videos about that, but basically the balance between ground clearance because um, you want your links to be level with the ground if you can for the best ride and that's why stock Super Duty front radius arms are level. But uh, if you want more ground clearance, you have to have them angled. And then <clears throat> And then just whatever comes up as far as clearance issues that you have on your particular truck. But one thing about this, and as I'm sitting right here in this spot, you notice my cradle is uh, perfectly centered with the center of the cab. Most people don't know that when I'm driving around. Sometimes you could mount, I mean, you do it however you want. You could make the cradle centered in the wheelbase so that the front links are the same as the rear. I wanted to center it in the cab. Uh, I just think it looks cooler. That's just me. Uh, let's see. Also, anytime you're doing with, you know, coilovers and lifts and extra suspension is the compromise between how tall it is and how good it rides. So I wanted it to be double the travel of stock 
and be as low as possible. And so it has eight inches of travel in the front and 11 in the rear. That's more than double of stock. And it is seven inches taller than a stock high boy, which high boys obviously are kind of tall to start with. But the only way you can avoid having it being super tall is to have shock towers that go up really far up into your hood. And when I built the suspension at that point, I was thinking that I might do twin turbos. Ended up being way easier to do superchargers, so. I didn't want to have shock towers that go all the way up to the hood, so that's wanted more engine space for exhaust and turbos. So <clears throat> that's why the truck is is basically as low as I could get it. I didn't want a giant towering truck with 44s. But that said, with uh, if I put some spacers underneath my airbags and longer rear shocks and swap out my front shock towers for shorter ones I could have this truck lifted another five six inches for probably 1500 bucks if I ever did want to do 44 so I'm probably not going to do that but <clears throat> let's see these are Firestone airbags they are utilizing a uh, airlift for performance uh, air compressor. It's actually mounted right there on the inside of the frame where you can't see it. And there's no air tank. No, it's a wireless setup. It uses a uh, cordless remote, Bluetooth like this. And it, uh, it's pretty sweet. If I hook up a trailer, I just bump up the weight a little bit. Or if I want to lower the truck, I just pump down on there and drop it. So it's pretty slick setup. Let's see. Oh, I've got my full stainless steel exhaust under here. That's the first truck I ever did full stainless on. Uh, got a four inch aluminum drive shaft. That's one thing with doing a crew cab and this drivetrain setup. The rear drive shaft is within an inch of being too long to be able to maintain only four inch aluminum. If it was any longer, you'd have to go to six inch great big aluminum. I uh, didn't want to do that. So crew cab short bed's kind of the limit for that. Otherwise do a carrier bearing, which I definitely didn't want to do that either. So. Let's see, what else? Oh, speaking of drive shafts, because this is a 2017 motor and transmission, 6R80, 6-speed auto, automatic, I'm using the transfer case out of a 2009 F-150. I think it's a 40, Borg Warner 4416. They only made a F-150 with a manual transfer case a few years, so this one has you know, two wheel drive high, four wheel drive high, and uh, four low. So, very hard to find a transfer case that has four low and it was manual. It's very easy to find one that's electronic shift and at the time I didn't know if I wanted to try to make an electric shifter, so. Might switch to that someday, we'll see. Well, let's see, might as well go to the interior. Of course, you got the amp steps. Solomon at Solos Manufacturing helped me out with the brackets in that. To bolt these, it's a, kind of the first set that was hooked to a dent side, so uh, works really good. Pretty sweet setup. Uh, let's see. Obviously, we got 2008 F-150 King Ranch seats and center console. 2008 is the last year of the natural real cowhide leather i love it. it smells fantastic smells like it's new i had to buy a extra cowhide that matched in order to do the dash the steering wheel the shifter the door panels 
Same thing in the rear. Custom leather inserts in the door panels. Leather handles on here. F-150 seats. Um, overall, I love it. I wanted to use the 150 seats because I thought it would be better for leg room in the rear. And just because 150s are smaller trucks than you know the Super Duties, I thought it would work out better. It's, it's actually pretty good. Not that anybody sits back there very much these days, but let's see, what else? So as far as using the uh, F-150 center console, obviously the stock F-150 from 2008 had a, like a really ugly different piece that kind of connected from here up to the dash on the those trucks. So we custom made one. This is fiberglass. Got the flush mount Pioneer stereo. This is uh, because it's a 2008 truck. That shifter's for a four-speed automatic, and I got a six-speed in here. But using the cable from the four-speed shifter, it actually just hooked up right to the 6R80, so that was pretty easy. Let's see, we got uh, Dakota Digital gauges. I got uh, this panel's from 3D printed parts. That's my rock lights. Uh, driving lights and light bar got uh meeks machine and fab hooked me up with these billet parts billet here they're going to give me the billet units for my ac also yeah that's beautiful i'm you oh speaking of ac i'm using the nostalgic ac um using a factory panel this truck was not AC from the factory, so I had to cut those holes and dents or vents in the dash. Same here. Had to cut that in. Let's see. What else? I got my machine truck parts handles. I, that's actually one of my favorite things in the whole truck. Love it. Some stainless panels here. Let me see what else I'm missing. Let's see, I got my Fat Fender Garage seat mounts. Those are actually made for a Mustang and I just had to modify the bolt pattern in them to mount the F-150 seats. I would I would use those again. That was a that was a pretty sweet setup actually. It makes it handy. Uh, also the the gas pedal is bolted to the firewall with a bracket from Fat Fender. The Motor mounts are from Fat Fender Garage, as, along with the uh, transmission cross member. Uh, let's see. Well, I made myself a one-piece headliner. Oh, that light is from Fat Fender also, LED. Let's see. Yeah, no more, uh, no more broken piece of trim in the middle. That's another thing on these crew cabs. It's a giant pain. Let's see, what else? Yeah, I've had the windows tinted a couple times because I've had this truck for years. And uh, after 10 years and getting the paint job done, I had to redo all the tint. So now it has ceramic tint all the way around, including the front windshield. It's, uh, it's that's ceramic tint. I can't say enough good about it, especially living here in Arizona. The, even the clear tint blocks so much heat it's pretty amazing so on top of having uh, two layers of heat and sound control in the whole roof the back of the cab the floor the firewall and then having the ceramic tint it really I mean the only time you really need AC is when it's a hundred out it's pretty it's pretty amazing and of course no wipers for me don't need that here even though it looks like it's about to rain. I guess uh, I guess that's all I could say about that for now. Just uh, one more walk around and we'll call her good for the day.